Gee whiz, there's just way too much stuff on Netflix. How am I ever gonna be able to decide what to watch? I mean, I've already watched Tiger King like 20 times. How will I ever decide? Ah, oh shoot, oh gosh. Did somebody say Netflix? Ooh, who are you? I'm the anime man. No, 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 no. Nope. Oh, what is it now? You know what? We've been over this. You can't call yourself the Anime Man. There's already a YouTuber out there called the Anime Man. Well, then what do you want me to be called? Why are you asking me? It's your character. Call yourself, uh... Anime boy. There. That one, that, that works. Anime boy? That's, that's so much worse. Yeah, well, so is the sketch idea, so it all balances out. Now let's go back to right after you come through the door and you say your name. Fine. I'm the anime boy! God, that sounds stupid. Nani! I'm here to tell you that there's tons of anime already on Netflix! But, 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 anime boy? There's so many anime on Netflix! How will I even know where to start? <laughs> Back in there. That's why I'm here! To tell you what's good and what's not out of all the anime on Netflix! Let's get started! Hello everybody, it's your pal Jonah, back again with another video. Now if you couldn't tell from that very stupid and cringy sketch that I came up with and shot at 2 in the morning last night, we are once again talking about anime. More specifically, anime that you can find on Netflix. Since everyone is still stuck at home, a lot of people are turning to streaming services like Netflix to find something new to watch. Now amongst all the movies and television shows on Netflix, there's a big and daunting section called anime. Now in this anime section, there are a lot of really, really bad shows that you should probably avoid. However, there's also a surprising number of really, really good shows that you should watch. So to help you guys figure out where to start on Netflix, I have compiled this list of the top 10 anime available on Netflix. Now, as with any list that I make, I tried to be as objective as possible. However, since anime is something that I'm really passionate about, it's impossible for me, or anyone for that matter, to be 100% objective with anything. So a lot of this is based on my opinions. So while I did try to be objective, take everything I say with a small grain of salt. Now before we get into everything, if you like this video, make sure you let me know by hitting that big like button. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button and that little notification bell next to it. That way you get notified every time I upload a new video. Only around 60% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed, which means that there is a large number of you who aren't subscribed. So please make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Ready, it really helps me out and with all that junk out of the way we can get into the list now before I get into the actual top 10 list there are two shows I want to give a special shout out to that didn't quite make my list or my honorable mentions the first show I want to shout out is blue exorcist now blue exorcist is my favorite show of all time I freaking love blue exorcist I mean Look, look at this. The largest chunk of my manga collection is Blue Exorcist. And the only anime figurine that I own that isn't a pop is Rin from Blue Exorcist. So I love this show very much. And because of that, I didn't feel right adding it to the list because it is impossible for me to be objective in any way. So I just decided to leave it out entirely. But since it is my favorite, I did want to mention it. I don't, I don't know why I'm still holding this. I'm going to put it back. The other show I want to mention is Devilman Crybaby. While in my opinion, Devilman Crybaby is one of the best shows on Netflix and definitely deserves a spot on this list. Since this is a family channel and that show is quite mature, I didn't feel right recommending it to people. While it is very, very good, it is very much TVMA, so it's definitely not for everybody. However, if you are an adult and are old enough to make your own decisions, I do recommend you at least give it a shot. It's very well done and it will mess you up. First off on the actual list, we have at number 10, Attack on Titan. By this time, I'm sure most of you even casual anime fans have seen this show. And even if you're not an anime fan, you've probably at least heard of it. Attack on Titan was actually the first anime that I ever watched. And it was arguably one of the first shows that started to really make anime more mainstream in the West. Attack on Titan is set in a world where humanity has been overtaken by cannibalistic giants called Titans and must now live behind a series of giant walls. It follows a group of young Titan fighting soldiers who must protect what's left of humanity, venture out beyond the walls on survey missions, and uncover the mystery behind the Titans themselves. That's a really, 
really brief summary, but it's really hard to describe this show without venturing into spoiler territory. So I'm just going to avoid all that and leave you with that brief summary. Now, unfortunately, only the first season of Attack on Titan is available to watch on Netflix, which is arguably the worst season. But I still recommend that you definitely check it out. And all of the other seasons are available on Crunchyroll. So if you do get into it and need more, it's very easy to watch the rest of the seasons. At number nine, we have Durarara. Now, how do I even begin to describe Durarara? In the most basic of terms, it follows the lives of several citizens of the Ikebukuro district in Tokyo. Fun fact, I've been there. It's really cool. I loved it. I did a video on it. You should go check it out. Anyway, at first, all of these separate storylines seem completely unrelated to each other. However, as the show progresses, all of these storylines start to intertwine into one, centering around an urban legend about a headless rider and a mysterious internet-based gang known as The Dollars. Durara is one of my all-time favorite shows. It was actually one of the first shows I ever watched, and I highly recommend that you guys check it out. It's especially good if you're new to anime, as the story is very accessible to a Western audience, and the dub is also really, really well done. It's actually one of the only shows I ever watched in dub. Okay, so I'm reading my script here, and it turns out that it jumps straight from number nine to <laughs> number seven. So, which means I'm missing a number eight. So, in light of this, I now have to ad-lib a number eight. So, um, I think what was supposed to be number eight was actually Oron High School Host Club. So that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to spend too much time describing Oron High School Host Club, mainly because no matter what I say, it's going to sound really stupid and really ridiculous and dumb, and no one's going to want to watch it based on my description. However, that said, you should definitely check it out. It's so so funny it's absolutely hilarious it's entertaining the characters are lovable and crazy and ridiculous just everything about this show is phenomenal also the dub is again really well done this is also one of the few shows that i watched entirely in dub and actually one of the main voice actors went to liberty where i go to school so that's pretty cool. The one thing I will say though is if you watch this, keep in mind that it's satire. The whole show is supposed to be a satirization of the romance genre of anime. And that's important to know because if you go into it not knowing that it's satire, it seems really, really ridiculous and really stupid. But once you know that it's satire, it transforms into being brilliant and it truly is brilliant it's a great show and you should definitely watch it especially if you just want a nice like i'm gonna turn my brain off and just enjoy the show it's like the parks and rec of anime moving on back into the actual script of this video we have number seven which is code geass now it's it's been a really long time since i've watched code geass so it might suck it might be terrible <laughs> But when I watched it, I remember absolutely loving it, so that's why I kept it on this list. Code Geass is set in a world where Japan has been taken over by the Britannian Empire, and the citizens of the once proud nation are now treated like slaves, even having the name Japanese almost completely eradicated. One day, Lelouch, a Britannian high school student, receives a strange supernatural power, and decides to use this power to fight against the injustices of the Britannian Empire, as the powerful vigilante known only as Zero. This show has a lot to offer. It's got mystery. It's got intrigue. It's got a compelling anti-hero. It's got giant robot fights. It's got politics. It's got power trips. It's got Pizza Hut product placement, which is a thing. I don't know why, but it is. It makes no sense, but it's actually kind of funny. I'm a big fan of this show. And once again, it's a really good show to get into if you haven't really watched that much anime or any anime for that matter. And the dub is also phenomenal. So I highly recommend that you check this one out. Moving on into number six, we have Anohimita Hana no Namai wo Boku Tachi wa Mada Shiranai, or just Anohana. I just, I want an excuse to say that really long name. Anohana follows a group of friends living in the Japanese countryside who drifted apart after the death of their friend when they were 10. However, now in high school, they must all reunite and face their grief and guilt when one of their friends starts to see her ghost. This show is beautiful and depressing in 
all the right ways. The way that it deals with loss and grief through how all of the separate characters deal with their grief in completely different ways is one of the best portrayals of mental illness that I've ever seen in anime. I highly, highly recommend that you check this out, especially if you're in the need of a good cry. And let's be real. We're all in the need of a good cry, especially in these trying times. Also, once you finish this show, the game of hide and seek will never be the same. Moving on into the top five, we have Gren Logan. Gren Logan is a trip. No explanation that I could give could possibly give this show justice, but I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. Gren Logan follows Simon and Kamina in their quest to retake the service world after a strange race of humanoid creatures forces all of humanity underground. The pair attempt to accomplish this daunting task thanks to the help of a strange mecha robot head that has the power to combine with other mechas. Now while on the surface this show may seem really cartoony and nothing more than just giant robot fights, it's so much more than that. At its core, Gren Logan is a story about friendship, loss, and the power of human determination and spirit. It will make you laugh, it will make you cry, and it will give you an existential crisis, all in the same episode. Not enough people have watched this show, and it really sucks because I want to talk to people about it, but like no one's watched it, and it's on Netflix, so please, I beg you, give this show a watch. You will not regret it. Number four, we have Hunter Hunter, or Hunter x Hunter. I've heard it both ways. I don't really think there's a right or wrong answer. I'm just gonna call it Hunter Hunter because that's a lot easier to say. Now, figuring out where to put Hunter Hunter on this list was really difficult because in reality, Hunter Hunter is easily a top three show for me. However, that said, only the first four story arcs are available on Netflix and the show doesn't really reach God tier level until the end of the fifth story arc. So because of that, I'm putting it at number four. So Hunter x Hunter is one of those long running shonen anime with over a hundred episodes and multiple distinct story arcs. So it's really hard to give just a brief summary. But in the most basic of terms, Hunter x Hunter follows Gon and Kalua in their quest to become hunters, who are these super powerful, well, hunters. There's like a bunch of different kinds of hunters and there's a whole like hunter society and hunter association. It's really complicated, but it's also really cool. Anyway, it follows Gon and Kalua in their quest to become hunters in order to find Gon's long lost dad, who is one of the most powerful hunters in existence. I'm not the biggest shonen fan. However, I would argue that this is easily one of the best shonen anime out there. The characters are very well developed and lovable. The action scenes are incredibly awesome. And it features what is, in my opinion, one of the best magic systems in all of anime. Fair warning, stuff gets real crazy towards the end. Moving into the top three, we have Neon Genesis Evangelion. If you know anything about anime, I guarantee you saw this one coming. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this show purely because I've watched it all the way through twice and I still have no idea how to even begin to describe this show. All I'll say is watch it. It should honestly be like a legal requirement for every anime fan to watch this show at least once. If you've been with this channel for a while, you know that I don't like to curse on this channel, but the only word I can think of to adequately describe the way this show is, is the word mind. At number two, we have A Silent Voice. A Silent Voice is a movie that came out in 2016, hashtag Oscar snub, and was directed by Naoko Yamada. It follows Shoya Ishida, a high school student who comes back into contact with a deaf girl who he relentlessly bullied in elementary school. Throughout the movie, Shoya tries desperately to make amends for the abuse he was responsible for and also deal with his own intense feelings of guilt and depression. It's one of the most beautiful and important films, anime or otherwise, that I've ever watched. And even if you aren't an anime fan, if you're just a fan of movies in general, I beg of you to check this one out. It deals with some really serious and sensitive issues like abuse, bullying, suicide, depression, guilt, and disability in such a visually stunning and heartfelt way. It's one of the best representations of mental illness in anime that I've ever seen. And it will make you cry, please go watch this movie. And on that note, before we get into number one, I want to go through a few honorable mentions. First, we have Angel Beats, which is a show set in an afterlife high school where people must deal with their past trauma in order to move on peacefully into the next life. Next is One Punch Man. Everything you need to know is literally in the title. It's called One Punch Man. It's about a guy who can defeat any supervillain with a single punch. And no, 
that concept does not get boring. Next, No Game No Life is set in a fantasy game world where everything is decided purely through games. Mobile Suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans follows a ragtag group of child soldiers who decide to take their own destiny into their own hands. Blah blah politics, blah blah giant robot fights, blah blah giant robot fights in space. It's really good and you should definitely check it out. And then our last honorable mention is, of course, Death Note. I'm sure there's probably going to be some of you who are really upset that Death Note was not on this list, but I just couldn't do it. I mean, the, the last 15 episodes really killed this show for me. I mean, it starts out so good and it gets super good like halfway through. Then it just like all crumbles down towards the end. It, it, it goes like full Game of Thrones season eight. And because of that, I couldn't put it on the list. And finally, at number one, we have Sword Art Online. I'm just kidding. It's Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, but like, honestly, who, who, who didn't see this coming? If you're only going to watch one anime in your lifetime, this one should be it. This show is, in a word, phenomenal. I know multiple people who don't even watch anime, but have watched Full Metal Alchemist and will tell you, it's incredible. It follows brothers Edward and Alphonse Elric on their quest for the mythical Philosopher's Stone. After an attempt to bring their mother back to life using the power of alchemy goes wrong, Edward is left without a leg and Alphonse without his whole body. Desperate and alone, Edward sacrifices his arm in order to bind his brother's soul to a suit of body armor. That's just the setup. That's like just the beginning. The list of issues that this show touches is daunting. Racism, war, PTSD, religion, politics, power, madness, revenge, the list goes on and on. And it deals with all of these issues very well. This show will break you. The best word I can use to describe it is honestly epic. This show is an epic in every sense of the word. No single anime has stuck with me longer than this one has. It truly feels like you yourself went on this epic quest with these characters. And I still, to this day, nearly three years later, think about this show and vividly remember how I felt when it finally ended. It's absolutely phenomenal and easily earns the number one spot. So there you have it. That is my list of the top 10 anime on Netflix. I hope you guys find this list helpful and I hope as well, of course, that you all are staying healthy both mentally and physically and following all health and social distancing guidelines. I know it may seem really hard right now, but I am confident that we all will get through this and be better as people for it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, make sure you let me know by hitting that like button and also make sure you hit that big red subscribe button, that little bell next to it. That way you're notified every time I upload a new video. If you guys have any shows that you think I should have added or you think that I left out, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. And with all that said, this is your pal Jonah signing off and saying see you next time on Jonah Entertainment. Bye everybody. I wish I found some better sounds no one's ever heard I wish I had a better voice to sing some better words I wish I found some chords in an order that is new